Hi, we're hey. back. Welcome. Yeah. Let's see if Andrew's happy. Well, as you've seen with the title, our network screwed us. Um, and that's too bad because tonight was so amazing. Let me check and make sure this mic is on. Yeah, it's on. Uh, that really didn't work out the way we were hoping. And I've been on tech support with our provider and ends up there might even be a hardware issue outside of our place here. So we might have to wait a week or two to have a technician, well, a technician come hopefully in the next two days or so, check all the lines outside, and most likely then repairs. We're getting too strong a signal, and because of that, um, it's uh, it knocked out my uh, 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 my router. Well, my, uh, oh my god. I, now you're meeting Andrew when Andrew's angry. And when Andrew's angry, he has trouble getting his words out because there's lots of things he'd like to say and he can't, so the filter's heavily on. So, But well, we're having such a great time and it couldn't yeah. have been in the worst time to, if, for it to oh. happen. Uh, you know, uh, it's been, it, it was so amazing to have Dr. Bushcraft on, you know, people had so many questions and we were yeah. genuinely interested and, in, oh my God, uh, yeah, it, it's just upsetting. The funny part, if you want to look at it, is that we were just starting to talk about living off the grid. And, yeah. uh, maybe that was the Never science. thought of that. Um, yeah, that's true. So for those of you who like uh, believing in signs, uh, maybe that's what it was. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who like conspiracies, well, maybe we broke internet. You say we're back in a couple if we want. Uh, well, it's up to you. Yeah. We were going to offer you a completely new another stream yeah. <laughs> because yeah. you deserve all attention. But uh, yeah. it's up to you. If you are up to that, we are up to that yep. too. And uh, please tr uh, tweet this out. Uh, we're back. I'm yep. just putting the tweet out as well. But we are back. Um, our deepest, deepest apologies to you. Uh, oh my God Almighty, that bugs me so much for that to happen. It was. A, uh, here, I'm going to give him one in case, uh, just so I don't forget. There we go. Such a gentleman to, to even offer that after that happened. I profusely apologize for it. But we were having such a great time. But uh, my phone's going in for repair in a couple of weeks. Time, so I won't be able to upload a video for two weeks when it goes in for repair. Raven Rain, Rain Books. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, the technology yeah. is good yeah. when it works and it, yeah, yeah. it doesn't. Uh, and we're yeah. so used to it. We, we take it for granted. Yeah. We think that it always have been there, but. This is what happens, unfortunately. And, and yep. uh, yeah, I said you the link, biker. It's completely up to you. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> oh, healthy, uh, healthy trails 199. I made it. Welcome. Yeah, whereas you can see by the title, we had a few issues. So, and the, and the technician was really nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. I mean. You can't go freaking out on these guys. I mean, when we actually had them on a bit longer. We already had it running, but at that point, it's like let's try to figure out what's wrong because I definitely don't want to keep doing this every night. Uh, it hasn't happened yet, but we've noticed lately like a signal going in and out some. So uh, we appreciate uh, your understanding, though. Yeah, uh, and uh, and really, and I. I appreciate so much you were guys ready, and especially by by Kurt Bushcraft, were ready to carry on without us. Yeah, yeah, yeah so exactly. Sweet. If there was any way we could have kept that running, yeah, you uh, guys had questions ready, yeah. and and Biker Bushcraft was answering them, hosting our <laughs> live stream. <laughs> I was so sweet. I wish you could have continued, you know, and uh, unfortunately it cut off our internet completely. So. Um, but yeah, that was amazing. They're, you're so nice, guys. Alan Oxidine, uh, just uh, glad I caught you guys. Thank you so much. I've been missing so much. Well, you, you've been very good at getting, at least watching the, the the replays and that, which is truly, truly appreciated. So uh, you're always there with us in spirit. So who else do we have in here? Mickey Wilson has been such, yeah, things happen, Pusha. Exactly, exactly. They do. You know, 
it's just I appreciate you guys coming. I appreciate uh, Biker being on with us. Biker Bushcraft is the best. That's yeah, right. that's right. He is. Like, I mean, I couldn't stop like li listening to him talk. Uh, uh, there's just something about him. Like, he should be doing audio books first and foremost. He is such a pleasure. He's so articulate. His voice, like, you know. Uh, it's always great to have somebody on like that. I mean, not that we don't have great guests. Everybody's interesting here. We have so many different variations of guests, and every one of them brings their own special set of skills to uh, to to the channel. Well, we yeah. can tell you about. I think yeah. we're just a bit. Uh, Got yeah, 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 our, yeah, our, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, maybe we'll uh, <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, so we we can just tell you uh, about uh, what we're gonna do this week. Uh, oh, okay. So tomorrow, let's get it together. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow we're gonna have Friday Night Lights with. Frog uh, tactics. Yeah, which is gonna uh, be very cool. Which is gonna be very cool because it's gonna be kind of is gonna be like a Tuesday tech talk, but on Friday. Mm. Uh, so if you have any questions about any technologies, uh, you know, uh, this is a time to ask as well. You're gonna have us and uh, uh, Frog Tech Tips uh, answering your questions and talking about uh, hey. technology, security, and so on. So tune in hey there. Yeah, man, now our guest is back. We love you. <laughs> How are you? And I realized the TV is off because I used you through the, the surround sound. So I uh -oh. hear you. In t hey, can you hear us? I can hear you. Yeah, cut That's out a couple of times. Back up and running. I, want, <laughs> I know you're very understanding, man, but I profusely, profusely want to apologize. I've been enjoying you on here so much, and a, a disappointment wouldn't even begin to describe how I feel about it. So, oh no, no, no! This, this is so much fun, and we definitely have to do it again, regardless. I, yes, I, yes. You please, know, everybody that's on this stream. I just had such a blast with and met. I I never even thought we'd get into some of the other topics like the alternative energy stuff. So I love. I I, and that means a lot. I'm glad you enjoy what we're doing here because actually that means a lot coming from you, and I really do mean that. So I'm going to be cutting that snippet out and using it at some point somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fun, fun. Uh, uh, yeah, you've been in a lot of the streams. I, like I know for a while, but I think you've caught a good couple of the guests we've had. I would say. I try very hard to catch as many as I can. You know, it, one of the things, and everybody here that's got channels, I'm sure knows, is YouTube community. We've got to try and support each other, especially all of us that are small channels out there that are trying to grow. Yep. And uh, a great way to do that is to network, is to get on these live streams. And what I've found is I run into people that have so many common interests um the there was somebody on the earlier stream that i connected with she does covers of songs she's got an amazing voice she likes the genres that i like yeah uh, i think i'm gonna be spending a lot of time on her channel <laughs> so, that's, that's, she was the one at the beginning on our channel it was her first time here she was doing all the covers you were talking to her before you came on live with us yeah yeah, yeah she's really cool she is and you know it's just it's so amazing the people that you come across you mentioned at the beginning of the other stream that uh you were thinking it, uh you were remembering beer belly travelers connected us and i think you're right and yeah eileen and dana love those guys oh, yeah. Yeah. good friends starting off with our youtube relationship and now we've just developed to be actual friends in real life it's fantastic <laughs> That's the beauty of all of this. And that's when we said a while ago, you know, when they asked you about, you know, what century you'd want to be born into. There's so many great things in this. If you just use it the right way, we're in like the most amazing time in the world's history. As long as it doesn't control us and we use it to our advantage. These things are, Xenia and I met on a video game 7,000 kilometers away. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> yeah. What are the odds? You know, it wasn't a dating site or anything. We just, one of those 3D games where they drop you in the same place uh, uh -huh. called Second Life that was big in the mid 2000s. 
<laughs> okay. I, I, my wife and I were part of a uh, family motorcycle club that found Second Life. And I won't admit to how many hours that we spent on Second Life, but over about two years' time, um, Second Life, this life, it was kind of a toss up. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. And I still have the app, and I, I even checked it out about a month ago, and my login still works. I still have some Linden dollars. <laughs> Me too. Oh Me too, exactly. I forgot a 63-something Linden. It comes up to like $20 Canadian or something. <laughs> oh, man. I did want to go out there. I, I was watching this. Uh, Healthy Trails, also yep. Happy Trails, but their new channel, Healthy Trails 199. Yeah, is on here. You guys are awesome. Uh, for anybody who hasn't checked out their new channel, check it out. They've got some really cool stuff on there, and I love how they present their cooking. It's it's just amazing. They're just going on a camping trip with Beer Belly Travelers. Uh, yes. Yeah. That's I'm so amazing. jealous. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what I love it so much that you know people connect even beyond the the YouTube channel connections you know uh, us here too uh, yeah. we are establishing some connections beyond youtube uh, with canadians and and it's so amazing you know <laughs> it's, it's really great to connect i'm actually just showing their channel to everybody right now so definitely yeah uh, guys when you get a chance to go check them out i, yeah. I it was either on your channel or maybe beer belly travelers i had found them I, that's quite possible too yeah and, they're uh, they're they're so fun. They've hiked their so the Happy Trails channel. They've hiked all over the country, a lot of the national parks, and their videos are just fun. And they hike at my pace. I mean, I'm sorry. There's some extreme hikers out there, and I, you guys are are great. But man, that's not my pace. I <laughs> I like to take it a little easier. Yeah, we always say we want to come back from any trip exhausted. That's always the goal of what we do. <laughs> Yeah, well, exhausted is one thing, but I want to come back. <laughs> and I want to still have a desire to do it again. <laughs> I'll not tell the whole story, but I, did you see the other night when we uh, took the, I was showing, we took the kids to, well, Xenia and I, to where Russia, Belarus, and Latvia meet? No, I have not seen that. Yeah, that was an adventure, and we almost got caught, and we went in without permits. We didn't know the last two kilometers of Latvia that borders Russia and Belarus if you're even the people the few people that get to live there they have to get a form uh, signed by the government each year just to be there like a permit and it's renewed on a yearly basis wow and if we had got caught it was a three thousand euro fine for each of us and uh Xenia would have been okay on that part but the rest of us would have been kicked out of the country for five years oh man so we had well, a four glad you didn't get caught <laughs> yep well, it was the same year we did the iceland thing with the seven days in the car it was the yeah. same time, and we went through, and uh, the, the border guard actually gave us the okay to go through, and uh, we got to see something that almost nobody ever sees, and there's a round tree on a mound of dirt, and the dirt is made out of the ashes of 40 villages that were destroyed during World War II. They brought them there. Wow. And there's three pillars and a, and a message of peace in Belarusian, Latvian, and Russian, and you have a row of lime trees on each side with a little walkway about 50 feet long. And you come out into this clearing, and the round tree is there. I'm just uh, past it. There's a little creek, and there's two rows of poplar trees with a little wooden bridge, and two rows of birch trees with a little wooden bridge. Well, the poplar is the official tree of Belarus, and the other ones are the official tree of Russia. So when you step on that bridge, you've actually entered the country. Wow. That's, that's a part of the world I would love to see. I've never been there. Man, well, I'm 40 years so so that was my conflict growing up. That's what I always said. It was there and uh, in Ireland. Those are the two main conflicts that I can remember seeing on the news all the time in that. So mm -hmm. that's why it meant so much to get there for me. Same here. Same here. And I, yes, and those are two places you just mentioned are big time on my bucket list. So oh. you know, my travels have pretty much been North America. And but that's cool. You could spend a lifetime just traveling through North America and still not even see a quarter of what you would want to get to. Easily, easily. And, you know, you you know from your experiences, driving truck, I've been to 49 of the 50 U.S. states. I've been to Canada, oh, wow. and I've been to Mexico. 
But the interesting thing is, is so many of those states I went to while I was driving a truck and I saw so little. Yep. You really 100%. You know, it's a blur. <laughs> exactly. It's not like I took the Freightliner down to visit, you know, <laughs> Mount Rushmore and stuff like that. You know, I passed an interstate where you cut off to Mount Rushmore. You know, it's always those stories. <laughs> yeah, it's it really is. But, and the same uh, as the cities, people like, oh, God, you visited Philadelphia. What do you think? Well, I went to the worst part of town there was because, unfortunately, they don't keep meatpacking plants in some scenic areas. You know? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I, I still remember some of those places. Uh, <laughs> That's but, so yeah, it's there is so much to see, and with what I do, that's that's really what I try to do. My, and I mentioned it on the earlier stream. My wife generally travels with me. The last uh, year, she hasn't been able to uh, due to some uh, surgeries she's recovering from. Oh, but, I didn't hear that. Uh, she'll eventually be back on the bike, and we'll be back on the road. And uh, wow. we we travel every chance we get, uh, basically. Whenever there's some reason that uh, we don't have to be anywhere else, we hit the road on the bike and go wherever we can. And it's it's always those adventures like you described. We don't plan. We plan a direction and yes. maybe a general de destination, you know, like let's go to Missouri. And that's right. about as specific as it gets. <laughs> I, I absolutely love it. I love it. That's what it's all about. And that makes the adventure so much more uh so much more enjoyable i find is that spontaneity i remember last uh, my son turned 16 just before christmas and we had to go to camelton new brunswick the next province over from quebec and we had to go get his i was getting him his passport for his birthday he wasn't happy about it but i said that's my birthday gift to you <laughs> so i get him his passport and we were up there already and we said you know what let's just go for a drive we ended up driving to the other province prince edward island the smallest province in canada it's this little island where Canada was confederated. And we ended up spending two days there. Like, we had no plans. We had basically no clothes. We just dropped at a Walmart, got the kids some swimming trunks, and found a little hotel in the middle of nowhere. It was blowing snow and went swimming at some pools and just enjoyed the place. That's cool. Yeah. That's, <laughs> you know, it's those little adventures, too. Um, we had... Uh, one and i'll i'll keep this g-rated but uh you can elaborate yourself <laughs> is uh <laughs> we, we were traveling across the country and happened to uh stop into somebody that we knew in fact in missouri visited them had dinner and then went to and decided to stay at a hotel that night we went into this hotel and asked them if they had a hot tub because nothing's better than getting in a hot tub after you get off the road, right? Yeah. They said, oh, my God. We, we have one. It's back behind the courtyard in this area, but it's not really open. But if you guys want to, you can use it. So we went back there, and we had the hot tub to ourselves the whole oh. night. Oh, my God. And, I mean, just. In the watery, basically. <laughs> <laughs> it was wonderful, you know, and it was just nice to – to end up in the middle of nowhere and these people were kind to us and let us run amok and hang out and not be bothered. <laughs> that is so cool. What those little moments like that is what makes traveling so special is the unexpected, you know, and making the best out of whatever situation you're in. Absolutely. It's never bad. It's an adventure. And I truly believe that, you know, well, that's, that's the big thing too, is life is an adventure and you, take advantage of every opportunity you get to keep it that way. Oh, isn't that the truth? And people, we forget that so often, but it is so true. Actually, if you look on the screen for a second, I just, I'll show them quickly. That's those pictures from, uh, uh, can I move this? Yeah. Okay. Good. I don't know if you can see that's the, the where I was talking about with the three countries meet. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's the post, and we had to park here because there was trees, uh, cameras hidden in all the trees here. The border crossing guy was really good because he let us go in with no papers or nothing. And there's the trees leading in. So uh, just go quickly. There, this is going into Russia, right there where that little crossing is. There's nobody there. It's this eerie quiet. And there you can see a close up. 
and I'll just go quickly. There's the post for left field. There's a going into Belarus because there's the poplar trees. And once you put one foot, the bridge was broken, but once you put one foot on it, you're actually in there. It's not when you get to the middle. So he was very strict about the kids. There's a oh. side view. So there's where you start walking, and there's where Russia starts is right here. Wow. And you know, it's it's interesting because in the living in the United States, you don't really think about things like that. Definitely. You know, you, you go to uh, the Canadian border, you go to the Mexican border, and it's very clearly delineated. And yep. it's you just don't get that feeling of if I make one accidental step, That's I could be great. going to prison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, big time. And they were watching us the whole time. There's cameras everywhere. You could see them on the bridges. You could see them in the trees. They were everywhere. There's probably 20 cameras in that area, just on the Latvian side. Wow. See, there's that tree of hope. And this is made from the ashes of 40 villages burnt during World War II. What an amazing experience for your kids, too. Well, that's what yeah. I'm thinking. When we're watching them, we were saying that they're seeing something that almost even most of the residents of these three countries never get to see. Well, I've never seen it all my life living there. And I never really knew it existed. because it's Wow. Just, okay. <laughs> that, there, there's that really, you see the points. There's the three countries. There's Belarus, uh, uh, Russia, uh, Latvia. That's yeah. the exact. And you can see the little stick here with the yellow police tape. That was the only thing marking the actual border. <laughs> which is falling down you can see it there you can see a camera in the tree right here on the on the edge of this poplar wow, yeah. Yeah. that's the belarusian side and that's walking through the 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 lime tree for latvia and that's what you cross into i felt it, that's how you first i almost walked right into russia if i hadn't turned right here like he told me to because he mixed it up it was at, before the turn i would have walked directly into russia without even realizing it <laughs> Just oh. Oh. This road is the road that was used by the Russians in World War II when they launched their attack on the Germans in Latvia. This is the road that was made for it. Uh, Joey says he can see that uh, Putin without the shirt and with the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the famous Putin sto story. You bet. Joey always a lot of stuff. <laughs> Joey's Joey's Joey. <laughs> we love Joey. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, that's that's an, just amazing. I, I can only imagine how that impacted your kids and how it's going to impact them 20 years from now. Yes, when they're in high school and stuff, I can truly appreciate it or college and whenever when they can truly appreciate what they – because now there's a nine-foot fence there. That's all gone. Well, it's not gone, but there's a nine-foot fence now dividing everything. Yeah, because right after that, all that uh, trouble started with Russia and EU, so they quickly went and built a nine-foot fence. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah. we might be one of the last ones that actually got to go there just by complete fluke. Yeah, because it's the it's the last border of EU basically. Yeah. Like, uh, with Russia, that's why. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm really impressed. We we got 17 more people back I, on here, God. and watching this at a moment's notice for for a redo. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming back on like that. That's so gentlemanly of you. I, we really do appreciate it. I, I oh, I'm, I'm having fun. <laughs> oh, I was having the time of my life. I've, uh, I can't repeat any of the words that I said here, but it was not a happy scenario. <laughs> uh, yes, one of one of the curses of the 21st century is yes. we to is technology is a benefit and a curse because boy, we get so reliant on it. Oh. And it's, it's you get so upset when it doesn't work. It does. It does because it's become such an integral part of everything that we do at this point. It's amazing how it's conquered our lives. Really, it's it's really something when you think about it. It is. It is. I although that's one of those. I, I almost want to say um, survivalist things. People talk about how apocalyptic it would be to lose our power grid or to lose our internet yeah. through whatever happened. And if you think about it, uh, you're only as reliant on it as you allow yourself to be. Yeah. To me, losing the internet would be frustrating, but it, how would it impact my day? Eh, not really. Yeah. I mean, and to lose the power grid, even though it's so intrinsically 
involved in every part of our life, it's still not something that really would have to bring civilization to a halt if people didn't let it. Yeah. So it is how much we allow ourselves to be controlled by those things that that makes their impact such a big deal or not. Oh, definitely. I'm an absolute an utter chain to it. I hate to say it. I'm so I am so chained to it. It's not even funny anymore. I I almost go into panic attack. <laughs> and I like the outdoors, and I like getting out. Actually, I used to do. I used to work. I was a forest uh, years ago. I did. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name. What they call it in English? It's called in French. They call it civic culture. You know the the stand up saws where you cut the trees. You oh yeah, feet. And uh, I took an allergy to spruce. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh yeah. I I, I look like a I, like a lizard by the end. I had nothing left in my body. <laughs> like. Uh, oh wow. I grew up in it my whole life. I spent time building cabins. I worked with it. It's around my like where I lived. It was covered in nothing but hardwood and spruce. And now even if I go near it, the least bit, my eyes go like golf balls. My wife like, suffered a similar fate, and it we. Years ago, our first cruising boat was a wooden boat, and okay. we spent years working on bringing it back from the dead from when we purchased it. And it's all mahogany and teak, and over that time, breathing the, the dust, which is unavoidable no matter what you do, yeah, uh, she developed allergies to it, and it really, really messes with her. Oh, oh, yeah, that's terrible. Though. Well, it's like any other chemical. I mean, it's, it, it's a tree. It's natural, but everything is still a chemical. It's the same as if you work in certain plants or certain, you know, there's many things that you can develop an allergy to over time from the, from overexposure. Yeah, exactly. I think overexposure to anything is your worst enemy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's, um, but I hate it because I want to do more with my kids. Like, it bothers me so much that I can't just go and make like a campfire with my kids in the woods as much as easily as I used to because it's surrounded by spruce, you know, and yeah. what do you use there for us? Our softwood is basically all spruce. So it's kind of hard to run away from. So a Raven, uh, Rain Books also said that she uh, knows where you guys are coming from. She's addicted to phone because she reads uh, ebooks, audio books on YouTube all the time. So also chain. So can relate, <laughs> although grew up without internet. Hey, Joe says, I just want to say you must check out Biker Bushcraft's channel. Canada loves the bushcraft. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, hey, Joe, man. You're he's, you're so cool. And I, by the way, I love your comments. Every time you comment on my videos, man, that's, that's cool. It's, <laughs> I look forward to it. He's like our new hipster for the crowd. I love him. Everybody got to sing for A. Joe. They might like this channel or not like this channel, but everybody likes A. Joe in the end. Okay. Yeah. I know Bottle Cat was asking in the previous stream if you are planning to go to BC anytime. Um, actually, we, God, has it been five years? We were just in DC, but I guess it was five years ago. <laughs> it passes oh, fast. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, we will probably go back in there sometime uh, in the foreseeable future. I don't know how soon, but I grew up in that area. So we, we really enjoy going back and hanging out in the Smithsonian and wandering around Great Falls and things like that. Oh, uh, Healthy Dress was asking about where can we get your cool shirts? Because I was trying to hit that link, but I think it was broken. So if you could uh, put the link oh, the, or tell us where the, to go to get your shirts. Uh, absolutely absolutely um you can inf email me directly at info at bikerbushcraft.com and i will absolutely make sure that uh, you have all the information i did not know the link was broken so thank you that's the first i've heard about it and uh i need to i need to fix that because uh I had three people ordered shirts. I, to be totally honest, was disappointed. So many people said they liked them. And uh, I'm still sticking with my uh, $20 includes shipping anywhere in the wow. U.S. Oh, that's great. Um, Canada, if I can find a way to get it to you guys for less than $23, I would love to ship to Canada too. Yeah, but uh, 
Canada is expensive. Out a way to do it. Yeah, postal is not postal. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, but uh, hey, you know, if somebody wants to make a border run, I'll ship it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> to, our, to our fellow YouTubers, uh, the other side of Niagara Falls, we could. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I could ship it to that Walmart by Toronto, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 right. <laughs> Oh, my God. oh, when he told us that story the other night, I was choking. Oh. I was laughing so hard. You know. He said, well, I put it in the GPS, and it was the closest Walmart to me, so I headed over and crossed right over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, the joys of border towns, eh? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Ever see some of those ones like in Vermont? And I'm sure they probably had them out in Michigan and that, too, where half the house is in Canada, half in the U.S. I've heard of them. I have not seen them. but uh... Once once every two years you'll see them on the news it's one of those at the end the lighter side and it's always this older couple that think they're funny and they're like well hon would you get me a cup of american tea and dear would you go watch the canadian television and they go back and forth for like three minutes <laughs> uh yeah well all i remember about canadian media and don't get me wrong i love canada i yeah, really i know about canadian media <laughs> but I, driving through canada and being able to get cbc on eight stations and yes. nothing else <laughs> yeah that's canada you nailed it <laughs> oh that's what i'm telling like xenia because she hasn't had a chance to be much in the states like when i was driving truck you guys in the states like the am channel in the middle of freaking kansas somewhere and god knows where and you can't even barely turn the dial on an am station you got every channel it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, a lot of them were telling me to, if I find Jesus, I'll be okay. But, <laughs> hey, but it's still noise, right? It's still something. It's not the same channel competing with each other. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. We have, so um, I'm a ham radio operator. And oh, cool. uh, wow. I play with radio and I understand how it works. And yeah. being out, I was on a marine expedition down off the Gulf of Mexico. Now at night, AM radio carries. And so just on a whim, I decided to tune in to my local AM station out of San Francisco. And lo and behold, even though I'm 350 miles down the coast wow. of uh, Baja, I'm listening to a San Francisco radio. You really picked it up on AM? Yeah. Oh my God almighty, yeah. that's crazy. So. Yeah, AM has uh, has its place. <laughs> well, yeah, it does. It does for sure. No, no, there's, there's something to be said for it. I love the nighttime when you'd be driving truck at two in the morning, listening to all the talk radio and all that, and it, it brings everybody out of the woodwork. You get anything and everything. Oh, absolutely, and yeah, hey, Joe, I I I try and do as much as I can. <laughs> uh, I there, you know, I I dabbled in physics, but it really didn't stick engineering i can't deal with somebody telling me that this is the only way something will work so that didn't really work out so there's a few things i don't do <laughs> you're so amazing you're such a rounded person and it shows in your personality right away you're one of those people that you meet on the street and you're like this guy's got a million things that he can kind of con carry a conversation on i love it <laughs> well i do enjoy telling a good story as much as i enjoy hearing one <laughs> Well, that, yeah, no, and that's what a good storyteller is because they're always listening for the next story they can, you know, that's how you accumulate them as well as tell them, and that's uh, that's the best mark of a great storyteller. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I agree with you there. Especially with your travels. I mean, you know, that way you get to meet so many people and so many characters, and you, 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 there's no way you couldn't be a good storyteller after all the experiences. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a, a running joke with my wife. She, when she and I first got together 20 years ago, this month, by the way. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Yay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, when she and I first got together, uh, we'd travel around, and I was involved with some organizations where I was pretty well known. And we'd go someplace halfway across the country and go into an airport, and I'd run into somebody that knew me. <laughs> it's like uh who do you know here everywhere we go, who do you know? <laughs> but uh you know you when you travel around when you get your face out there you do tend to get known and it's yeah. it's fun it is it makes the world a little smaller 
a little it more posing. Exactly. You know? And my sister said that about me all the time. She said my brother should work for the FBI because he knows everybody. It's because I talk to everybody. I drive her crazy. There's no line in a grocery stop. By the end of the grocery line, we all know. You know, we're talking about everything. You know, I always. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Well, hey Joe, I, I appreciate that, man. I I hope it does. Um, so I did yeah. mention on the previous stream that uh, you know I because of this accident uh, financially put me in a situation where I had to come down off the mountain and get an eight to five type thing, which I'm going to be starting next month. Um, doesn't mean I'm going to stop making my videos. I will continue and I'm going to continue to get out there and actually it's going to open up some potentially new genres for what I'm doing because um, I'm going to be back over near the ocean so maybe we'll get a little bit of beach camping in perfect and uh, but it's also made me reevaluate whether I wanted to monetize my channel okay and I thought about it when I first got into this I mean I completely honest i saw joe robinette heard him say he's supporting his family on this and i thought you know i could do that yeah and <clears throat> jumped in and started doing it and it's it's been a tremendous amount of fun and it's taken on a life of its own yeah and now that i'm starting to get close to being able to monetize um i'm wondering whether I really want the pressure of that or whether I just want to keep doing this because I love doing it. Right. So that's a fair, that's a fair assessment. Somebody said that today in the, in the, the arm of Korea, I was in for a few minutes. So I seen somebody saying that because there is two types here. There's the hobbyist and there's the, the YouTuber. It's like, you know, that are pushing, you know, and, and it's okay to be the hobbyist. There's nothing wrong in it. It's almost like the monetization scare kind of put everybody into this frenzy that they have to be monetized. And that's not the case. Well, it's true. And, you know, when the, in February, when the changes came down the pike, they redid the monetization. I mean, for me, it was a kick in the teeth because I was just about to hit 10,000 views. Oh, no. Oh. And, you know, I was better off than some of the people who had just been monetized. Yeah. So, and I really didn't complain about it because it's just the way it works and yeah. let it go. But um, through that process, I watched exactly what other people were doing and i watched all of the influencers and telling us you know this is how you have to do it live streams of the new thing yeah. and these are all the things you need to do and i thought you know that's not my channel yeah so rather than restructure my channel to continue to chase youtube's ever-changing monetization policies i decided to stick with what i'm doing yeah and i'm going to continue to do that and you know, I I really hope that it does monetize. That would be a nice ego boost, but yeah. I just I'm not worried about that. What I'm really worried about is that what I'm turning out is quality, and what I'm turning out interests people and gets them to want to watch it and enjoy it. I, I you see, this is where we're really stuck because when we came on YouTube after a year, I only had forty two subscribers. I had a video did really well, uh, well two in the end, I guess. I we have a business doing video and photography, so this was kind of my playground a to do the stuff that I don't get to do for clients, and b you know to get more noticed. And I gave up because I don't. It wasn't doing it for the money. I wasn't chasing that stuff, but I was more. I wanted people to see what I was doing because my big thing is editing. I shoot, but I don't even really care. I wish people were bringing video to me and I was just editing. That's where I'm creative. <laughs> but, but it's true. Like I, I, that's where that's like some people paint. That's what I do. Like that's where I get my compliments, if you will, on everything. It's usually my editing stuff. And we did this live stream was nothing more than a one time thing to celebrate 1K. I never want to be in front of a camera. I don't like being in front Neither of a camera. Neither am I. I'm behind the lens. I'm on photography yeah. on the other side. We went on with James Cox one night just to kind of say thank you for all they did, you know, and kind of give him a little boost. Like, And people want to see where we were because we we're never in front of the camera. So that they're always wondered by our answers. We're male, female. We're one person or 20. 
or really one mixed up person because she would say, I love your makeup, and I'd be saying, I love the Hemi. So nobody <laughs> knew what we were. <laughs> I definitely kept them guessing. And after that, our channel started going up because people we were already doing good, but by then people got to know us better. And I love doing this live stream. I never thought I would, but it's because we found a format that we like. And I love doing this where I get to meet somebody for two hours and get to see everything else that you don't get to see when they make their videos. Right. Like Husky, uh, uh, Musky Hans is a great example. He's in the channel right now. A guy from Wisconsin who does fishing channels. And we find out that he's going for his P he's doing his dissertation for his PhD. Wow. So, that's yeah. cool. <laughs> you know, you tonight, like, you know, and getting people getting to know you and talking about your history and stuff. And I'm torn now because I don't get to edit much anymore, and that's depressing. I miss it. I'm really looking at the videos sitting there, and I'm never getting them done. Young Frau. Young Frau. Yeah, I'm going to be doing Young Frau very soon, and that's uh, been promised for a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's the highest point in Europe. You literally take a train that takes you 11,000 feet in the air to the top of the Alps. I've heard and of that. Yeah, it was made over 100 years ago, and when you walk outside, you're at the highest point in Europe, and you don't even... It's literally just all by train. And that's been sitting there. Literally, I have probably another hour to do on it, and it's ready to go, and I haven't had a chance in, like, well, almost, what, two, three weeks? Yeah. To upload it, so. Well, yeah, so. exactly. It's interesting because, you know, YouTube really, as a corporation, is driving a lot of people's actions, a lot of people's yeah. content. And it seems to me, and this is just my personal observation, that what they're trying to do is move from people's attempt at Gone with the Wind and encourage people to attempt Jerry Springer. Very true. Very and, true. You know, maybe it's because they want that hit and run audience. I know when they started really pushing people to do the shorter videos, five minute videos, uh, that was, again, that move to get the the people watching on their iPhone during their smoke break and uh, yeah. the people that don't want to watch it as their source of entertainment. That's true. Um, you I know, agree 100 with you. You know, me personally, I I want to create that entertaining content. One of the reasons that, and you guys are getting all the secrets out of me here, but <laughs> one of the reasons that I picked See, we are like Springer. <laughs> <laughs> one of the 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 videos that I typically do when I'm not talking about my injuries are <laughs> um, either 25 minutes or 42 minutes long. And the reason I picked those particular lengths is because when you're watching television, those are pretty standard links for a television episode. So I want people to watch my videos like they would watch television yes, and hopefully get the same kind of enjoyment out of them. They settle into it. It's not a quick watch. It's something you actually sit down and say, I'm going to watch, you know, his channel now. You, you just sit back, you have your cup of coffee and, and watch the whole episode. That's a very smart idea. Absolutely. And uh, Stephen Bauman just commented that small content providers are much better than big. And I, in general, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, in fact, there are some people out there that are, they're doing um, garbage content for, yep. for lack of a better way to yeah. put it. You get on there for two minutes and you see unintelligible garbage that has nothing to do with anything, yep. but they got 5 million subscribers. That's right. I don't really get it. But mm -hmm. I'm also not willing to play in that court. That's not my. Uh, that's not my thing. <laughs> but you see, YouTube has kind of gone the same way as music does, and everything does. It got cor uh, the corporations stepped in, and now they're running it like boy bands. And the most mass-produced tripe that they can throw out fast that will appeal to the twelve-year-old is going to get front and center because that's what brings in the advertising dollars. I don't like it. I hate it. And that's the same as I didn't. I don't like and hate most music out today for young people because it's not geared towards me, and it's sad because it kills the kind of it's, it hinders the spirit that YouTube was built on originally. But once again, like everything else that ever happens, there's always going to be that point where people are going to say, "Well, there's five cents to be made." They're going to step in and change it to fit that form. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I noticed uh, Raven Rainey. Books. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. 
I've seen a couple of good comments from you in the last both streams here, but I wanted to comment on this. I agree with you. Canada's beautiful. I I don't I have actually never stayed in a hotel in Canada. I've camped out every time I've been there. So I love it. <laughs> out under the stars. Yep. Yeah, out on or or in the camper van. That's so. that's the same thing in my opinion. <laughs> I love it. I you truly get to be a bit more uh, like a part of the place, you know. It, you do, and you know you. I mean, you're out there. And I was talking about those turnouts earlier. You're out there in the turnout. There's not another human being around. There's nothing but wildlife and stars, and it's just it's great. It's comfortable. It's quiet. It's all you could ever ask for. Well, that's what I tell people, and some of them are still shocked. I brought it up, I think, one or two nights ago. They don't like Canada is the second biggest country in the world by landmass after Russia, but our population is equal to the state of California. Like one state is equal to all of Canada's population. Right. You know, it really puts it in perspective. <laughs> it does. It does. And yeah, Raven Rainy Books. Yeah, I I agree. I agree, and I when it comes to watching people's videos and that by the way is also a huge challenge because yeah as you grow on youtube you get to know more people more channels and you want to support everybody who's supporting you yeah now, i would like to watch absolutely everybody's videos who supports me yeah the yeah. truth is there aren't that many hours in the day yeah and so it gets very difficult to do. It's overwhelming even. Yep. And so I have to be a little selective. It's, it's, there's no other choice. It breaks the, like I always had a, a, a way of doing it. Every time somebody called my video, I would run right over to theirs and watch another one of theirs, then comment on mine. And the other day we literally had to break down and for the first time put hearts in a comment because we just can't do it anymore. You, you know, I a, still go back and try watch the yeah. newest videos, and, and because as I just commented for to Raven Rain uh, books, uh, it's about not getting to know each other. You yeah, know? Uh, right. it's not for numbers. And, and Joey was saying, like, you know, we don't do this for numbers. We no. do because we like it. Yeah, you know, and and we don't go and support for numbers. We go if we like the content. You know. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, I'll never kick anybody on my channel. But a lot of you guys make great content. Those are the ones I keep going back to, like try to give. But I want to see other people because I don't want to miss anybody. And it, it, it kills me. It's like always like one more channel. Well, yeah. I answered him. I'll do one more, you know. And then it's like it's 2.30 in the morning. And it, it does get away on you. And you got to rope it in at some point and let the guild go a little bit and say, I've just done the best I can, you know. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I mentioned earlier Joe Robinette. I've got a Joe Robinette addiction. Now, to watch his videos is a two hour commitment yep. anymore. And I know he sure as heck not supporting my channel, but <laughs> I honestly, know. I enjoy it. So there's two hours out of my week. That's right. And, but yes, there has to be some kind of enjoyment of the content and happy trails. You're right. Sometimes it does feel like going to a bar to meet people. Yes. And <laughs> you just have to find that happy medium. Yep. To, you know, you've got your little group you want to sit there and finish beers through the end of the night with. Yeah. And the rest, sure, be social, yep. buy a drink, take a drink, but you got your circle. You'll run into them at the post office every now and then, but they're not your main circle. You know? Yep. Exactly. You say hi to them every couple of times and keep in touch. And I'll look to it in the list. Like, uh, say, if I'm on your channel, I watch a video of yours. I'll sometimes scroll down through your comments and say, oh, yeah, this guy I haven't heard from from in a long time. I'll go over and watch a video and say, you know, it's been a while. Just wanted to kind of reconnect with you, you know, because I know it's been a few and uh, just wanted to let you know I'm still thinking about you, even though I'm not there all the time. So right. yeah, you said in the in the chat, too, that live streams are a great way for a great um, place for that, because that's when we really get to reconnect with people. You Definitely. Know, on a regular basis. So. Take it easy, Coriolis Effectment. Hopefully, yes, thank you so I much for that. There's a channel there. I'm going to catch him before he goes. I'm going to save his, and I'm going to go watch a video after because I haven't seen his in a bit. And at the first, we used to watch a lot of each other's stuff. So there's a great example of it right there. So uh, 
you know, and then it's just sometimes that's what, and a lot of times too, as YouTube like uh, unfriends you, uh, unrings the bell, that happens a lot here. So, yeah, I, 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 too much pressure on themselves, just be real and watch who you love. Exactly. The yeah. interaction, what counts, you know? Exactly. Uh, often people also want to just, they watch, but they don't say anything, but they watch on and they comment like, number 23 or something <laughs> uh you know uh, great comments and interaction is what brings the connection together well i was just looking in the chat room and you know we've only done this this is our 20th night a uh, night of streams and it's already amazing how many people keep coming back that's in here mm -hmm. and that means a lot yeah i recognize people in your streams every time i'm on i i see a lot of the same faces it, it, and that's nice it's so it's like coming home a bit you know I think Sandy and I now catch ourselves. We'll be going to the grocery store, and you know, oh, did you see that bottle caps? Oh, that's bottle. Ca <laughs> yes, bottle caps. You come up a lot in conversations. <laughs> we love. We always picture bottle caps as looking one of the old guys from the Muppets. They're up in the balcony. That's how we kind of picture him. There, he's always got the comments going and everything and stuff. And he's one of our favorites. He's, he we we he makes us laugh all the time. Hey, Joe is our team leader always getting everybody going and all that the <laughs> ultimate supporter uh yeah you know, well, like i said Adrio, got a bit of an edge and he likes to let it slide out a little bit now and then i'm always watching <laughs> to see Did you see we're getting to know them like that and i think that's so amazing it uh, is otherwise this wouldn't be i wouldn't want to do this every night just going on with the same rhetoric and a whole bunch of new people because then it's like a band playing uh what do you call what do you call that uh when the, the uh, stand up night, yeah. you know, open mic night. I, I wouldn't want to do that. I love having a new guest, but I, I well, we've known you already. But like, <laughs> it's nice to have the same people you can come in and at least say, How was your day? You know, and they're, they're rooting for you and that it means a lot. Absolutely. And it, it's such a great community. Oh, and yeah. you guys are fortunate. There's There aren't a whole lot of live streams that I participate in. But there are a few, and you have the best group. Uh, that's why I was so excited when you invited me to be part of this. Oh my God, I, I, I've never been so honored. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's cool. It, it's interesting because um, there's, there's one guy who's an author, um, does a lot of Viking stuff, who I follow, and okay. I've been on a couple of his live streams and they tend to get out of hand. He actually has too many people on there and people start getting a little bit out of hand about things. And this is a perfect size. Um, there, a lot of the other ones are smaller. Some of the ones that are bigger, if you start getting too big, you know, people, you start getting people in there that aren't really part of the community. They're yeah. just there. Yeah. They're ghosting around and trying just only there. Like, I encourage everybody to get to know each other's channels and sub. And I like that they do that without it becoming like a, a shark fest. Right. You know, you can tell they're gone for five minutes and it's not a bad thing because they're actually gone to watch one of your videos. It's not, I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you, and stuff. So, this is a perfect size, Joey. Yeah. Says. Well, we do hope that uh, <laughs> we're going to be growing too. Yeah. But, uh, uh, we hope that we can manage the the size, and I always believe that that if we if you do what you like, you attract the same type of people the way you are yourself. Yeah, like, that's why yes. I I preach about not trying to put something that is not you because yeah. it's just not going to work because you're not going to have that connection with people. But like even in photography, like they I always find like if you attract the type of people that you are yourself, if that's mm -hmm. what you're putting in front. And I find it works here too. You know, we are as we are. Yeah. <laughs> with our, our goof ups with and dropping stuff you know? and everything else that happens. But, but that's why, you know, we attract yeah. kind of the same type of people and that's why we get each other, you know? It's, I, I, yeah, it's interesting because you, you're right. Um, now I've been to a few shoots where I was shooting videography while somebody else was shooting stills. And I found there to be a complete disconnect. Like uh, mm. they resented me being there. 
so so not all photographers are buddy buddy when you're on the same location. no they can be quite competitive sometimes <laughs> yes. very territorial <laughs> yes yes and i think that's it more than anything else you get some guy you'll see in the city like shooting a cathedral or something and he's like irate because somebody walked by well buddy you didn't own the street <laughs> you know you've got to come to grips with what you got going there you know, yeah, you, know, you don't like it, it pay 10,000 to the city and have them shut it down for half the day. You can take all the pictures you want. Yeah, uh, it's it's funny. People put different priorities on things. Well, anybody like, who's artistic, you're going to have characters that just goes with it, whether it's photography, writing songs. And you're going to get the eccentric and the eclectics. They always kind of come out of the woodwork for this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd say. Uh, eccentric and eclectic are two very appropriate terms. <laughs> <laughs> i think i resemble that remark <laughs> no you walk this fine line with it that you can manage on all sides of people and that's what i meant tonight about it you you straddle the line if i can use that term and you can mingle with everybody in both sides of that and that's what i find so interesting about you well, thank you. I, I actually do try to accomplish that. I I believe that all people are interesting. Definitely. Even people that I strongly disagree with, I still find interesting. I want to know yep. their story. So Sometimes even more when you disagree with them, because you kind of want to understand, to try to have another chance to see where they're coming from. Very true. Very, yep. very true. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I enjoy people and enjoy stories so <laughs> well it's it's got to come with the territory there's always a cost to every price we pay so <laughs> oh, so true so. <coughs> pardon me sorry i just gotta get a bit of coffee okay <laughs> yeah oh, excuse me <laughs> yeah i i loved raven ray books uh, uh summed up what i was talking about right does i highly agree you attract people who are interested in who you are as a person, as well as your content, but mainly I have found it's the personality that draws people in the most and over. Yeah, very, very well agree. said. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. It's a it personality of somebody. I mean, there are people that you enjoy being around. There are people that you don't, and it yep. has nothing to do with anything except personality. So. It's that first impression thing. Oh yeah, <laughs> big time, and especially where we are on this on this platform, first impressions can really make or break somebody. You know, very true. It's it's, it's, it's interesting to me when I'm when I'm watching videos on YouTube and looking at the different ways of doing videos, ways of storytelling. Um, you know, you get people who don't speak but they do show their face. You get some people who don't speak or show their face. And then you get some people who are all over the screen. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm close and personal. Yeah. <laughs> but I've, I mean, I've never felt one way of doing it was better than the other. And I know people have different reasons for doing that. I'm yeah, kind of yeah. curious what you think about that or is there is there a better method or something that works better or worse? The best method is whatever is your best foot forward. And if your best foot forward is being in front of the camera, do it. And be as in front of it as you can possibly be. If your best efforts behind the camera pay off, do that. And you that's because it's very weird, YouTube, because you have these different genres. Like you have people that came on here because they do carpentry or mechanics or hiking or bushcraft you guys are all hobbyists that kind of took on the you maybe did photography or videography before but you're using it more as a tool to show what you really do it's not the forefront as much and some people put a ton of effort into it and some people are really good at both but your main focus is on that genre that hobby that you brought to the table with us, that's why we kind of appeal to a lot of people is for the simple reason is we do video behind the scenes. So we're kind of open. You know, we're not a hiking channel. We're not a cooking channel. We're not a weightlifting channel. But all those channels can kind of come and watch what we do. So that's kind of been a big plus for us to branch out into a lot of different areas. And I, that's been 
that's been a big help. I really appreciated that part because I know when you start off in a genre, I meet a lot of people who say, well, I'm in the barbecue circuit. And they'll mm -hmm. say, like, you know, the other barbecue guys can get very competitive sometimes, you know, and it's hard to break out of it. And, right. So I think I always, from watching, I think it's good to have about 30% of your channel followers in the same genre as what you do or the same hobby and 70% people who just like to come by and watch that don't really have a direct connection to it. Because mm -hmm. you have enough to keep you on your toes and they're usually the guys that kind of work in sync with what you do, but not enough to start bringing you down and picking fault with all your work. That's just yeah. my opinion. I, From, yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Because I'm on the outside looking in type of thing. Yeah. And I did want to comment on bottle caps. I saw that. Dude, I got two words for you. Danny Trejo. <laughs> well, what was the comment? Of, uh, what was he, he, he said he was too ugly to be a... <laughs> uh, and, Hopefully uh, we'll get him on one night for a reveal because I think everybody wants to see bottle caps on. So. <laughs> uh kirby's fish and grill uh that's cool i ride absolutely and uh please do check out my channel you might enjoy it um uh, also i was going to uh uh throw out there i will be publishing a new video tomorrow oh yeah oh lacking but um this is the one everybody's been waiting for and that is the official drawing and giveaway for my thousand subscriber giveaway yes so, oh, amazing and uh i i'm giving away some pretty cool stuff uh um, you're really generous on this one <laughs> i it this was a, a major goal for me um I, and i don't know how you guys feel about it but to me the idea that a thousand people want to follow my work oh I mean, how big a compliment is that <laughs> it's it we were just talking about today Xenia and I and we're still trying to kind of wrap our head around it sometimes it, it just it, it was astounding to me I mean I, yep. I have photography and cinematography background yep but um it's when you're shooting for somebody else yeah just not the same thing because it doesn't feel like they're following your work it feels like they're following the producers or the production company's work yeah this is all me and yeah. so it's it's almost overwhelming almost overwhelming but it is i always say you know we're the art department we're the producer we're the director we're the there's a, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of hats to wear and you got them all sitting on top of your head yes and you know what it's i wouldn't have it any other way <laughs> thank you i was going to say the same thing so uh complete creative control at the same time I hope that doesn't make us narcissists. I, I, well, a little. You need to be a bit of a narcissist to be out there. You know, we all try to be, we're all nice to each other, and I think we're not as bad as some of us, but you've got to have a bit of that to promote what you do. Of course. You know, I always said, look, we were talking the other night about 80s bands, and all the great singers were all, like, completely mentally screwed up because they needed to be to be able to write the right the good songs that stuck. <laughs> right. <laughs> Axel oh, Rose didn't wow. grow up in a suburban house with uh, three dogs and two sisters. You know, <laughs> uh, hey Vanessa Kitty, I actually rode a recumbent trike for a while. I just sold it about two years ago, and I thought those things were cool. But that's a whole that's a whole show in itself. Vanessa and uh, Kirby's. Uh, oh, so I've got two bikes. The one that's in my videos is a '97 Softail, and the one that I crashed on that you know, also was in a couple of videos is a uh, 2000 road king how, how what kind of well, how is the bike now where you is repairable yeah not bad really um front fender bent front end and a few scrapes on the the crash bars but You're really uh, not lucky yeah yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, yeah my god the way you described it that was so scary <laughs> yeah it, it was it, well it was kind of a, a fluke of course i described the the whole accident but the detail of how the bike got damaged is as I began to go down, my left foot caught the pavement and it literally lifted me and the bike up on my leg. Oh my so God. Pole vaulted me and the motorcycle. I, at that point, I separated from the bike and the bike came down on the front fender, 
and then back down on its wheels and just scraped along on the crash bars. So it really didn't do any other damage. Oh my God. But uh, that's how the bone shattered. And that's why the only real damage to the bike is the front fender and front end. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my, that's an awful accident. I'm, I'm so, we're so happy that you're here tonight. Like, and you know, cause I mean, those things, you never know how they're going to turn out. And the main thing is oh, that yeah. you're here with us tonight and you know, you're on the mend and you're looking, and I know it too. I'm glad you're back. You're going to go driving again. Like, it's nice to hear that. I mean, you, it's a true passion and nothing can stop it in the end almost very I, true i hope your and, wife feels better soon so you can both yeah. enjoy what you were doing before me too it's important to both of us and it's yeah. it's something we enjoy doing together also vanessa kitty yeah me too pedal powered recumbent trike i had a, a cat trike uh expedition if i recall uh for a couple of years there and i uh, used to commute on that <laughs> so, but yeah i uh i i mean my wife and i have traveled all over on the bike and uh camped together and she's the fire starter and uh for those who have followed my channel there is uh a couple of stories about our exploits and her ability to start fires <laughs> <laughs> You guys are such a team. I love it. We are. We are. Well, we, we decided a long time ago that neither nobody could live with either one of us except for each other. So, you know, <laughs> we don't have much choice. Call it process of elimination. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so amazing. All right. Oh, my God almighty. You, I, Jen is like that with me. Like when we found each other, I, I was married previously. I have a son that's 20. And Xenia just kind of like, I hate to use the term, but kind of fit like a glove. Like we just seem to be on the page and so much and kind of like um, you can go into any situation and each one knows what they got to do to get through it. Mm -hmm. And that's an amazing thing. Like we've traveled, you know, with those kids, you know, days and days. I When we said about the days in Iceland, I forgot to tell you, we did the seven days, well, six days that we stayed one night with a friend. And we had a layover in uh, Denmark. If we had a flown that day, it was going to cost X amount. Of, I forget how much. It was cheaper to stay for four days and get an Audi A5 with no hotel. So we did the same thing in Denmark for four days right after it. <laughs> so we were 11 days with one night in a house, and the rest of the time was just on the road. We stayed at Legoland and slept in the hurricane. The kids <laughs> in the car. The car was literally blowing back and forth, like rocking like this. And the kids are having the sleep of their lives. They're, they're out like a light. It was a brown, brand new Audi A5. It had 51 original kilometers on it. Wow. Wagon. <laughs> so they, they were, a lot of it's been by the seat of the pants, and you got to work together as a team to be able to do that properly, I find. You do. You do. And it's, you know, they, they say the difference between uh, adventure and ordeal is all attitude, and that's that's really what it is. You know, if the two of you can – go into something, then that's how we do it. We go into something with the right attitude if this is just part of the adventure. Yep. And uh, we enjoy every minute of it. So I see here Riff, um, uh, he's new. I just met him this evening, Riff Magos. I hope I pronounce it right. If I didn't, my apologies is asking about, I get this every now and then the picture behind me. Uh, I did a backpacking trip in Europe and this is, uh, I don't collect souvenirs, I collect pictures. And I took that in Slovenia. And I picked, we each chose one colored picture. We have one over each coach here. And I picked that one because Slovenia was the biggest surprise of all the trip for its beauty. That was in the capital, Ljubljana. And those pictures around it here, you'll see there's, uh, all those are from one trip. I did 12 countries in 15 days. We're going to do that rollover through the pictures one day. Yeah, yeah. Because we have, lo like, all our walls. Are yeah, we get that question every couple of days about the yeah. pictures, so. <laughs> you know, you, you need to do a loop video that's just nothing but those pictures going over and over. You pick up so <laughs> many minutes. Yeah, yeah, I love it. It's like a gift, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> well my video, the last one, if anybody goes back and looks, uh, three and a half minutes in Europe is one from every country and territory I've been in Europe. And I always wanted to, and now that I've been with Xenia, so a lot of people think, oh, it's too late in life to do something. 
I never got to do any of that till I was 41. Uh, well, I got uh, 30s with you. And this backpacking trip, the first one I ever did, I was 41 years old and never did it in my life. And <laughs> you're never too late to start. So, no. And, and, you know, when I got into underwater photography, I went to work for the largest underwater photography store in the world and running a department for them. And I had opportunities. Um, some I elected not to take, and I had to go other directions after uh, four years there. But um, those opportunities were there to travel, to go, wow. you know, uh, Indonesia, to go to the Caribbean on trips that my company led. Right. Participate in those. So, those, yes, those opportunities come when you least expect it, and yeah. but they will keep coming. Yeah, definitely. There's never a shortage unless it's like health that you can't do it. And I mean, health could be at five or it could be at 90. We can't control certain elements. But I mean, besides that, it's, uh, hey, Joe, I said I was 39. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> and I'm not 41. I'm 44. So there you go. I'm even older than. <laughs> but, but I'll stick with, I'll take 40. I don't care. See, age doesn't bother me at all. I was just talking to a friend the other day about it that was visiting here. She has a here. younger wife. That's yes, that's right. <laughs> she's 10 years younger than me, and I always say she's my retirement plan. <laughs> <laughs> some people get stocks. Some people get RSPs. I got a younger wife, so hopefully she'll keep me going for a while. <laughs> and I was talking to my friend that was here. We're the same age, and we're talking about turn when we turned 40, and he said it really bothered him. And I said, you know, in truthfulness, Full honesty, excuse me, I should say. Turning 40, I've had some of the best experiences of my life since I did. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't bother me a bit. And I'm old enough now to appreciate them more than I would have had them when I was younger. So I have no qualms. It never bothered me. It never... Some people do, I know, I understand. But for that, so far anyways, it hasn't... Well, for me, turning 40 didn't really bother me. But my wife, who's a little bit older than me, turned 41st and okay. it did bother her. So we solved that problem. <clears throat> I gave her a birthday party and uh, it's, this is an epic party. So I'm going to brag on myself and I'm going to tell the story. Brag away. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she spent her whole 39th year totally freaked out about turning 40. So for her 40th birthday party, I worked for a company that, uh, I had a lot of contacts. They could get me things. Her favorite food is live Maine lobster. She loves live Maine lobster better than anything. So I had uh, 40 live Maine lobsters flown in. Oh, my God. Wow. I had a bakery up near San Francisco as a client. So they baked some fresh French bread for us. And we are in an area that's the artichoke capital of the world, which is her other favorite food. So I had a bunch of fresh artichokes brought in. Oh and we had a party at our yacht club for with 40 people there and live Maine lobster and fresh French sourdough and uh, fresh artichokes, roasted artichokes. And <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Needless to say, she felt a lot better about her 40th birthday after that. Oh, I bet, my God. I, I bet you let the, most of the men in the chat yeah, I'm just gonna feel say, really bad yeah, right now. I was just going to say. <laughs> I hope my wife is not listening, and I, I can imagine what's going on through their heads now. Yeah, thanks for raising the bar there. <laughs> hey, you know, I do what I can. <laughs> oh, that is so amazing. How... Yeah. She must have been like blown away by it. Oh, very much so. Oh, it, it... oh. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you romantic in general? Like, yeah, uh, have was... you been like that before? I'm a very quiet romantic. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, not a not a very public romantic, but my wife and I, yeah, I I tend to try and do things like that for her as much as possible, and mm. and I enjoy doing them. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> and, and quite frankly, she does lots of cool things for me. She's uh, she, she's managed to throw a few surprise parties for me, and I'm I'm not one to even acknowledge my birthday, so that's a pretty big thing. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> she goes out of her way. Well, that's and it's twenty years this month. You said, right? Eh? 
Wow. Yeah, uh, yeah. Married 20 years this month. We actually have been together for 23 years. That's, that's amazing. So what what is the secret of uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> a time like that? Uh, well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we we are just very fortunate we are a perfect match for each other we like the same things we communicate well and uh, you know i it, she says going anywhere with me is an adventure it just sort of works out that way uh -huh. and she won't necessarily initiate going on an adventure but she certainly enjoys a good adventure so it's a good combination <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's so yeah. amazing, though. That's, that's, yeah. I figured quiet and romantic somewhere in that area. I knew you had some stuff up your sleeve. Just, <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we keep life interesting. And thank you, everybody, for the congrats. Uh, we're actually, we're pretty excited about it. I don't know that it's uh, going to be near as big a to do as I would like it to be, but um, we're, we're glad that it's 20 years and uh, we're looking forward to the next 20. <laughs> yeah, one of our anniversaries, we went to the, the, the kids, I think you had a doctor's appointment. We ended up at Ikea having breakfast. Well, we morning. are so <laughs> off the grid with our anniversary. Yeah. yeah, we had a meatball lunch at Ikea. Yeah, that's and, what it was, yeah. And we're very happy about it, actually. Yeah. I loved it. We look back at it fondly, actually. We talked, but it wasn't that it was like to be cheap or not. No. It was just working was... with what life got. You got two yeah. kids. And, you know. <laughs> that sounds like our kind of adventure. That's yeah, it is. Cool. It is. It is. Yeah. You know, like, there's a great example. Our kids, and we're talking about not, like, I made it a personal point for my kids not to get everything they ever want. I, I don't want them to be deprived of anything and never the essentials, but I don't want them to think that everything is just given right because it's a monday or because you want it and because it's you know and instead of always going like to mcdonald's and uh, blah 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 which we don't do often to begin with my wife cooks at home almost yeah, everything. I, I love cooking so yeah it's <laughs> the kids are excited when they get a chance to get away from, you know and get out and have something we <laughs> actually turned it and a lot of people are shocked when my seven-year-old daughter is telling them that she's excited to go to ikea because you know they don't you know they figured here burger king or something <laughs> what we do is we go to the Ikea because we pick up hot dogs and stuff, and then we drive about two kilometers over, and there's a watch spot for where the planes land in the Montreal airport. Uh -huh. So instead of just going and sitting in a fast food place and chomping down your food, we turn it into like a two-hour thing and take the kids, and we'll go and have our hot dogs watching the planes come in. That's very cool. We did that at Dulles Airport when I was a kid. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, it's, and that is actually a memory that sticks with me is we'd go and there's a statue outside Dulles Airport that uh, back in those days, as kids, we could climb on. And yeah, it, it it's something that I remember watching the planes, looking out over the Potomac and uh, hanging out by that statue. <laughs> well, then you just gave me a hope that because that's what I've always hoped that they'll go and, you know, when I'm gone, they can say, you know, I remember going with dad and. You know, we'd sit out there and have hot dogs. They'll say it's corny or whatever at the time, but you know they'll remember it at least fondly that we were all doing something together. And to yeah. me, that's that's the taking advantage of the moment. We can't go away on a trip at that moment, but instead of just sitting there on some hard plastic chairs and, you know, not that I don't want to look at everybody at the table, it's just why not mix it up with something else and make it a little more interesting and a little bit more of a family time. Exactly. And yeah, Kirby's Fish and Grill, uh, good luck on your charity drive tomorrow. And oh. uh, the two alpacas, I grew up in Alexandria and uh, well, I lived there for six years and I lived in Frederick County, Maryland for six years when I was growing up. I like Maryland. <laughs> yeah, like for example, I'll just continue the conversation. I'm sorry, I just was caught up in the chat. Like, uh, for example, a good example is uh, Christmas in our um, in our family, I yeah. think. Um, because when I was growing up, uh, Christmas for us was mostly about being together. And oftentimes there was like maybe one gift, you know, and most of the time it was, you know, oranges and things like that. Uh, maybe because my parents grew up at the time when it was Soviet Union, when it was uh, forbidden to celebrate Christmas, it wasn't really commercialized in, in, in their minds, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. 
we we never really acquired that commercial part of it. Of course, you know, cards and and, and maybe some of the window shopping yeah. and things like that, but never in a huge amount. So and and here when I came here. Uh, actually andrew came over to us first yeah, and he's that. seen that as well and he said he always felt like that but you know the pressure of being here and, and most of the people celebrate in a certain way here so i think it clicked with us to have it more simple and, yep. and have it more about traditions and spending time together having quality time together and as for gifts gifts no we don't drop them of having experience with no gifts, of course not no for example i love the four rule uh thing that we do uh is yeah they get one thing they want one thing they need one thing to wear and one thing to read i and like that way, yeah and that way they get uh, what they want uh, they also get what we want them to yeah. have and everybody's happy and we don't have christmas tree you know uh buried under the gifts which most of the time they don't remember you know after a week or two if there are hundreds of gifts who was from what but that way i think they appreciate it more and looking forward to it as well i think so you know when when i was a kid growing up um christmas is a lot of the gifts that i remember the most are things that people made or yeah. were handmade gifts or they weren't necessarily the things that I'd asked for or that I thought I wanted, but they were the things that uh, that people knew that I wanted or needed before yeah. I even knew it. Exactly, so. exactly. That's a very good point you said right there. Because it's very easy as a kid to get blinded by everything that's coming at you. Right. And it's not you that wants it. It's the media telling you that you want it. It's the commercials telling you want it. It's the packaging telling you you want it. Yeah. Except in 1977, I got a CB radio. That was different. Oh, that's no, amazing. Well. <laughs> like, me growing up, everything was Lego. Everything I got for Christmas was either, or my birthday was Lego, or I took the money and went and bought more Lego. I <laughs> supported that. And I'm glad they did, because to me, that was one of the greatest toys that was ever invented. Was, Legos were cool, yeah. Yeah, and whether you're two or 60, you know, everybody likes to put them together, build your own towns, there's no limit with it, and it gets you to think out of the box a little. It's nice to build what comes with it, but the first, the best part is to tear it all apart, throw it in with the rest of them, and then start from scratch. <laughs> well, I, I was more of a Lincoln Logs kid. I oh, okay, okay. I the same idea. Logs, to be honest. <laughs> same idea? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. And Lego was expensive. Since I was a kid, Lego was one of those. Uh, we took the kid what, that night when we were in the hurricane. That's where we took them the next day. Was built. We were in Bilbun, yeah. is where Lego was invented. Yeah, and that was a gift from their grandparents for yes. Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the type of gift we would ask them to get. Like, you know, I mean, they buy them toys, but we said, you know, it's something that they could really use. So they, they knew we were going. So they paid for their day at Legoland for them. Yeah. Holy cow, Riverbend Longbows Outdoors. 30 oh my God, almighty. <laughs> <laughs> That's your retirement fund, my friend. <laughs> and it does hold its value. I'm watching people talking on these Lego channels I found recently, like getting new subscribers and checking out stuff. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's incredible. But Lego gifts are amazing, uh, and like uh, we do the rebuild all the time with our son, and he does amazing stuff. The latest project that we did all together uh, okay. after the launching of the Tesla car into the space, we actually tried to rebuild the whole launching system with a car on top, uh, like the way it was. <laughs> right. That was pretty awesome. I, I think the mother was into it more than the son, I would Maybe. say, at some point. <laughs> Maybe a little had engines in just a little a, a, a landing <laughs> platform for the rockets we had all everything loved it <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's uh i don't know i the the indoor things like that because when i was a kid i i, I was always outdoors yeah I yes, lived in the city or in the country and so they're just even when it snowed i was still outdoors and so it just never really struck me to to play with indoor toys right and, you know things like that erector sets and legos and lincoln logs um 
th those were things you played with when you were homesick. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have a pretty cold climate, so we kind of had to have some indoor stuff to keep you busy because sometimes you'd have like a week of minus 40 Celsius and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It was just bone chilling cold to the point you couldn't even step outside barely. Yeah, so I yeah. think those were the whole, but I was outside all day and that would be my nighttime thing. And my father would come down, like I'd be 10 years old and I'd be up at like 3.30 in the morning building stuff and he'd like freaking out at me to go to bed, you know, like. Because <laughs> I go to bed, and then when they were gone to bed, I would sneak back down and start again. So go into the nighttime builds. See, I I did that with motorcycles. I'd sneak down to the garage at night and tinker oh. with it just because I couldn't sleep. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> um, two alpacas. I think that's who was asking me. Uh, yeah, two alpacas was asking how long I've been bushcrafting, and that's a great question. That's one of my favorite questions, and I'll tell you why. Um, I have been doing uh, woodsmanship as long as I've been alive. That's just how I grew up, playing in the sticks, figuring out how to make stuff, camping simply. Right. I've only been bushcrafting since I learned the term, which was maybe a year ago. <laughs> um, but uh, it's, it's a new term for an old practice. And um, I also mentioned in my channel that what I do isn't pure bushcrafting. It's really simple camping, but I, it's based on the principles of bushcrafting, which is taking what you have and making yourself comfortable with that. Whether all you have is a knife or an ax, or whether you have a knife and an ax and a coffee pot and a plate, that's what you have, and you find ways to camp comfortably with those items. So, um, it's an interesting question, and uh, it, I've been bushcrafting ever since I knew what bushcrafting was. <laughs> that is such an amazing answer. Yes. <clears throat> you are such a pleasure to listen to. My God. Oh, you've got to be doing audiobooks. You have the voice <laughs> for audiobooks. You should be telling your stories. Too. You should I look at like your own audiobooks with your tales. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's yeah. such a pleasure to listen to you. I almost forget that we're on this thing sometimes when you're talking. <laughs> I can see why people who are enjoying your radio show so much. Yeah, yeah. You no, should no. think of getting back to it. Since yep. you're not on the mountain now, maybe it's something you would be looking into. Well, I I don't know. I would love to do something like that. And I just haven't quite found my niche in a way that will pay the bills. Right. <laughs> um, you know, I and I think all of us struggle with that a little bit. Um, you know, I there are a lot of things that I really enjoy doing as with everybody yeah. uh, and trying to find ways to have those things produce an income, a livable income. Yeah. And yet still keep them enjoyable I is know. really the challenge. It is. And a lot of people get carried away here thinking that they're going to be on for a month. Everybody's going to take off and they're going to be living the high life, doing what they love. It's a real grind here. It can be, yes. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to go in that route, like it's got to be, you know, people try to get high and mighty and all. I'm just, if you're going for the money side and you really want to live off of it, like, you know, and that's your direct desire out of YouTube, you got one grind and where you're probably not going to do very well when it's all said and done. Right. It's like grabbing a guitar and going to L.A. and saying, I'm going to make it. And how many come home six months later with, you know, hand in hand? <laughs> it's, well, yeah. not, it's not for the faint of heart. No. And, you know, I, I don't know how many of the people on now have uh, experienced trying to make money with YouTube. Yeah. But I can tell you, when I, like I said, when I started, it was a realistic goal. I set a timeline. And I tried to do it. I talked to some experts, some people that know how to do this, know how to make money doing YouTube videos. Right. I listened to some of the influencers' videos. Yep. And what I discovered when I started following it, even though I never jumped on board with their formula for how to do videos, I started following their social media tactics. And I all of a sudden realized that I was working 24 hours a day. Oh, yeah. Yes. And oh, yeah. it was 
to go out and do a, a two night camping trip to create video was not only all work, but it actually put me behind with the social media work that I needed yeah. to keep up with. And I, I'm just on the very beginning of this. I, it was just in its infancy. Ultimately, I had to back off a little bit because there's just no way it was sustainable for me. Yeah. Like uh, you're a hundred percent like, thank God Xenia is doing a lot of the social media stuff. We're kind of like, we, uh, take on different areas in here because otherwise could never, ever, ever do it in a million well, years. Well, we're lucky that there are two of us, yeah. you know, even in this live stream, the way we can keep the engagement interacting yeah. is because I spend a lot of time in the chat, you know, and right. then, uh, Andrew, sometimes it's me more talking, sometimes it's Andrew depend depending, you know, but I think it's just, it's still not easy, but it's easier because yeah. there are two of us basically working on the same thing, you know. At the same time, we still have the business uh, yeah. uh, that we run through the day that we has no connection with YouTube whatsoever, which does make it a bit more harder, like to connect it together. But and throwing that a seven and eleven year old that need parents, you know, and running back and forth and <laughs> right. At first, we were helping out, and you know, we were in different channels, different groups. The I'm a creator one and helping out. You know, we were getting exposure. But by the time we were done, we realized our kids were getting off the bus, getting a snack. We'd see them for an hour going to do something. And before you know it, they were gone to bed. And it's like, I don't want to do this like that way. I mean, the, our, you know, I, I don't, we've got to have, I don't want to feel like our kids are missing out because of it. So our time frame is pretty good because our youngest one goes to bed around this time. And our older one, that gives him time to go do his thing before bed. But at least we get to spend time with them as well. You know, this is all for them. It's without them, it doesn't matter. This none of this matters to me. Yeah, and that makes sense. Well, I know um, I saw one comment in there about if you're in this to make money, you're crazy, and I agree. Yeah. Um, for for those who weren't on earlier when I was talking about it, uh, monetization of my channel is something that I looked at in the beginning. At this point. I'm still not sure whether I'm going to bother to monetize it or not. It's close, but it's not a priority for me. To me, the priority is to continue to create the content that I want to create. I, my channel is kind of an anachronism. It, it doesn't fit the mold. It mm -hmm. shouldn't perform the way it does. The analytics don't make any sense based on what YouTube has said works and doesn't work. So, <laughs> you got good. You got good numbers on your channel on your videos. They they really are. I mean, I'm I'm very pleased. But to me, I take a lot more away from the fact that people are watching the channel and enjoying the videos than I ever would from profit at yeah. this stage in the game. Now you know maybe when I catch and patch Joe Robin, that I might yeah. feel perfect. But <laughs> for now. <laughs> I'm the same way as you. Like when I said before, when I had only 42 subscribers, mm -hmm. it was the most disheartening thing to put 30, 40 hours of editing, everything I got into it, and to have such few people seeing what I'm doing. It's like writing a song and nobody ever gets to hear it. That means uh, more to me than any amount of money I could have ever generated from was to get some good positive feedback. Like I did one video, and there's a guy who's been watching a lot of my videos, and he said, uh, you have this uh, unbelievable talent to take ordinary day things that we don't we usually just pass by and make them interesting. Mm -hmm. And I thought of that for days. I told my parents about it. I told my sister. You know, I told my friend about it because that, to me, was the greatest payment I've ever gotten on YouTube was somebody who got what I do. Right. And that made me feel better. And I have to say hi to one person here because we just connected after a while, not seeing each other. He knows you too, I believe, Land Sea Air Canada. And you have an um, he has an amazing channel. He, I think he does something with broadcasting. We kind of talk lightly on it, and he shows a lot of the B roll that they're not using. Because I said your stuff looks so good, it should be. You should get in touch with the TV stations here in Canada. And he's like, well, yeah, that's kind of where some of it goes. <laughs> But you'd never guess the way he does his channel. It's very, it's not pretentious in any way. It's just uh, a really great channel. You'll see a lot of British Columbia with him. 
you'll see seaplanes and tugboats and all kinds of things. So. Bottle caps is happy. There's finally somebody from his side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bottle caps, is, bottle caps is ready to cut off BC from the rest of the world. He wants to make it his own territory. Well, he just was complaining that nobody's there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, you gotta, off. <laughs> yeah, you're not alone now, my friend. <laughs> Well, and, and in all fairness, bottle caps, you're closer to me than anybody else on this channel. Yes. <laughs> That's um, so true. It's secondhand productions. That is why I opted to switch my format from a polished production to a live stream on the uh, after of After Effects tutorials. My turnaround time is instant. Exactly. <laughs> it, the live streams do pay, are paying off for us as well. I mean, I love what we're doing, but they are helping us a lot because we had pitiful with watch time. That was what was killing me because right. I only had two videos that really took off, and they're all one of them is past the three sixty five mark, and the other one's going to be up in uh, maybe June or something. So somebody was commenting like, you know, if you're here in this for money, it might as well do a clothespin repair business because it, <laughs> it might pay you more. <laughs> Especially when you start off, you can't just think like that. So, you know, anything where you're going to work on commission and draw in advertising, it falls under music business. All these things work under the same thing. There's a lot more people with their feelings hurt than they than people that conquer. So you got to have a love for what you're doing, and you can't plan on retiring just because you opened up a YouTube channel. Yeah. Exactly. What is Lancier? Uh, there are millions of channels on YouTube. Few will ever become huge. For us, we are. So grateful to see such creative folks with no little uh, to no budget do amazing things. How true is that? How true? That's a great way of putting it. Yes, I really, yeah. really like that. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's interesting too because I, I, you know, I've heard people talk about retention time. Yeah, and I look at my times. I look at. Uh, YouTube telling us to make five minute videos mm -hmm. and my retention time stays pretty consistently around 11 to 13 minutes mm -hmm. and at least until I shortened my videos up, but, um, mm -hmm. which I, I think is pretty healthy. Yep. But I, what that tells me is that this formula, as much as it's got its advantages, if you start changing things around to meet their formula, you're you're going to lose your core base. You're going to lose the the heart of your channel. And mm -hmm. doing that to pursue money, I it, myself, I don't believe is profitable. Mm -hmm. I I may not be right about that, but that's my belief, and I'm going with it. Well, secondhand production put it great. He said, think of it this way. If you get paid, then you're in the top 5% of YouTube creators. Yeah. And that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, it's a good extra yeah. if it's there, but it can't be the goal. Yeah. Right. That's it. Exactly. It, it's a good carrot, and it's too bad when they played with it so much because it was a carrot on a stick. Like some people said, they didn't care that they only got $20 a month. It just felt like they were doing something productive. Mm -hmm. Tyson them to keep going. But yeah, it's not you're not going to retire on it either. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there were two comments. I know uh, two alpacas commented about the um, teaching uh, bush skills. And uh, also, I think it was Lancey Air Canada made a comment about the importance of knowing bush crafting skills, survival skills, especially up in Canada when you're in an area that's so sparsely populated. Yeah. Um, of course. so my channel, I, I am trying to do something a little bit unique with that. I'm not doing a David Canterbury where I'm going to sit there and step-by-step -step walk you through the skills, but what I'm going to do, I, I try to use those skills in a practical way so that if you're watching the channel and you find yourself in a situation where you need them, mm -hmm. it'll give you an idea. Yes. And it's over a larger scale. I think that's what a lot of the more successful YouTube channels are doing yeah. is they're, they're leading by example yeah. to kind of coin a phrase. Nope. And you're also very engaging the way you do it. You're kind of like the singing cowboy. You know, there's a little bit of a poet in there as well. 
it's not all technical and cut and dry. Nobody said on the previous stream, like a modern day cowboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> and I agree with that. Because you know, some people focus so much on the technique that they forget that they're they have to be engaging as well. Or some people are very engaging and and are awful at the technique that they're showing. And you kind of found that balance to be you're not in people's faces. You have this kind of a low, you like that cowboy song in the background that you kind of want to hear a little bit more of what they're saying. You know, it's kind of slowly pouring out there. You're not like, okay, now in step two, you have to put this and cross this. You're walking through and you're doing things as you're talking about other things. And I think it's so engaging your channel. That's what I think you really found the secret for in your genre, in your, your hobby genre. Well, thank you. Thank you. And yeah, the two alpacas, that's exactly the kind of thing I'm talking about too, is and as I'm sure you're oh, aware, yeah. watched any of my videos, my rule is every single item I carry should have more than one function. Yeah. And so handing students something and say three, find three ways to use it. That's great. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at it, Joe. Okay. I can't, I can't hold my lip trying to edit, but can't, cannot because I, <laughs> I am so intrigued by this conversation. <laughs> yeah. It, anything you want, except for the uh, live modern camp old, I, I think we're going to run into a copyright problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, that goes on a oh yeah, yeah, that, that's a done deal. That's a done deal. <laughs> you heard it here, folks, live on Pucho Studios live Good stream. <laughs> we got to tag on. We're getting onto his coattails now. We're gonna have a little slice of the pie. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that's good. I, I'm happy to bring people to the top with me. You know. <laughs> When you said about our live stream a while ago, I keep thinking about it in my head, like every five minutes that you, uh, like what you thought of our live stream. I'm so. That means so much to me. You saying that, I keep saying, I keep coming back to it in my head. Well, it was definitely from the heart. I, I don't. I have turned down two other requests to be on live streams because it just didn't really fit my channel. But you guys, I, I wasn't about to turn it down. <laughs> and it's so been fun. <laughs> I, I, because I know, and this sounds like, but I, one thing is, I know you have integrity. And it's always nice when somebody else with integrity respects what you do because then you at least feel like you're doing something right. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of live streams that popped out. That's another reason why I swore I would never do one because I find a lot of them are just kind of lazy throws that let's just get some views going. Right. Like, I'll just sit on the couch and we'll just look at the newspaper or just tell me your problems and we'll we'll curse about them for an hour. And I mean, there's an audience for it and hey, all the all the power to them, but I don't want to be in your face. We got to do this. We got to do this, and we got to make this. But I also didn't want to be on the couch. I wanted to find something more like a talk show without all the shock value, where you just discuss. You just have a talk like we're sitting at the table. Yeah, right. it's like being in your house or in yeah. our house, you know, uh, the easiness of that that I enjoy. And that's like, uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, and then the guests that we've had so far, and the people in the chat have made this work so much more than we would have ever dreamed it would have happened, you know? Well, it's fun. And you guys are great because you aren't confrontational with your guests. You bring people on and have conversations. Obviously, every one of your streams that I've seen, you've truly had an interest in the topic and in, in yep. the people that you had on. And that, that's huge. People yep. see that from the outside, too. Oh, even if we're not, you know, it's even if it's something that I have no interest into, that makes me even more want to dig into a person and find the other stuff. Either they're going to win me over on their subject that they did that I wasn't so interested into, or I'm going to find stuff into them that makes it interesting. T do you know what I mean? There's always something you can take away from everything. Right. Yeah. And I love that when I can see it in the chat and people are like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Or then they start asking questions about that because they're really onto it. I get excited for them, even if it's something I'm not interested about. I get excited when the chat's excited with the guest about something they like. Well, yeah, and it's all about getting to know more, yeah. you know, and there's always something that is going to catch on and be so, you know, yeah. be that that raisin. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, so and that's what it's so exciting about it. We like today we got to know so many things about you. Yep. Like. <laughs> You're romantic. <laughs> I do. She's gonna bring that up. Oh, 
How many I people know. watching your channel know that? <laughs> you know. Well, and, and you also discovered that I, besides just a general passion for history and culture and architecture, I have an absolute fascination with Eastern Bloc history. So yeah. you hit a nerve there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad about that. We can always find some common ground and stuff. Exactly. So. That's, that's what I love about this. <laughs> that's so cool. I, I'm so, and I can't thank you enough that you were gracious enough to come back on tonight. I do apologize once yes, again we for. We felt so bad. Oh my God. You were oh. awesome for coming back. And you guys here in the chat too, coming back. And yeah being with us through all of this thing. like look at everybody going like it's unbelievable it's 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 heartwarming to see this to be honest you know well it's it's fun and there's such a fun group in here and you know bottle caps and ajo and land sea air canada and uh just uh two alpacas everybody you guys are awesome and uh you know a lot of you i've seen in this chat i've seen on my channel Hey, Joe, you uh, always make just awesome comments on my videos. And uh, I mean, it's it's cool to get to interact at this level and get to actually answer questions real time. Yep. People. And and here, like, uh, yes, people are getting to know each other. And I love that. Like, definitely, like, joining each other's channels and finding something new they weren't into before. But it's not just about that. People are also wanting to build, I feel, stronger relationships relationships here with the people that they follow and that's what i think will pay off when the kind of the rush of the monetization apocalypse fades away mm -hmm. i do truly believe by seeing everybody coming here each night and doing this that those bonds will be there when everything else is kind of faded i agree completely. and that's, that's long-term watchers that will watch you know that will be able to look back and say i've watched 50 of this guy's videos you know and they can tell a new guy in the chat, hey, did you know that he's a romantic? I'll say it before Xenia does. <laughs> <laughs> I figure I'll beat her to the punch. <laughs> oh, no, that's, that's great. Oh, you know, uh, I, uh, I, I just, I'm, I'm amazed at uh, some of the comments and questions that have been in here. And, and you're right, you, you've definitely gotten to know me a little better. Oh, uh, I'm so honored, I am. <laughs> I do have a, a lot of varied interests and uh, hang out with a lot of diverse groups of people. But my hope is that uh, once this injury is done, I can actually get out there and start producing some more videos at the level that actually brought people to my channel. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm truly appreciative of the growth I've seen, but I'm also very aware that the networking that I've done has promoted that growth. Yeah. And I will give you an example. Um, Spirit Forest, who I know you guys know yep. of, I'm sure a lot of the people in the chat have heard of. Yep. Um, mentioned me in a video, and I got 100 subs in a day. Unbelievable. And it's that kind of networking that helps the channel grow. Um, yep. Of course, it also puts the onus on me to live up to the expectation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah, it gives stage fright sometimes when you think about it. <laughs> uh, but uh, I understand completely on that one. Well, I, on February second, we had forty-two subscribers. Wow! <laughs> and and today we cracked thirteen hundred. We got thirteen hundred and change. Uh, yeah. That's that's amazing. I mean, I'm I'm somewhere close to eleven hundred right now. And I was at a hundred somewhere in January or February. So that's, that's wow. fast growth. You know, it really, when it kicks in, it goes crazy. Sometimes you can't believe in a couple hours when you go back and check where you're actually at from the last point. Exactly. It, absolutely true. And I know some joined and they're never going to watch a single thing I do and they couldn't have cared less. They clicked a button, but you know what? I know through all it's, I use the analogy, and if anybody's listening here, this is an important thing to remember because it gets frustrating by times. Think of when they plant seed in the spring. Not every seed takes off, but if you can get out of 100 seeds, 90 of them take off and you get 10 duds, you still have a great crop. Right. The way I look at this as well. Absolutely. You know? 
Because I know sometimes I've gone the next morning and I'm missing 21 that I had from the day before. I've had that happen a couple of times. And it sucks, but what are you going to do? It's YouTube is mostly at that point they're punishing somebody who is adding too much that day. It's not your punishment, it's theirs. <laughs> so, you know, you have a chance for them to come back and sub you once again. So, <laughs> not to get disheartened. It's no, I, you know, I make, and I would tell anybody that's got a small YouTube channel that's trying to grow it, don't ignore the analytics, but don't get hung up on it. Yeah. Uh, I look at my analytics maybe once a week. And when I was really pushing to try and make this into a business, mm -hmm. um, I was looking at them maybe once a day, but I was not looking at the, the ups and downs of subs or things like that. I was looking at the things that matter, retention time, watch time. Yep. Uh, are people still watching my videos all the way through? And if not, why not? Exactly. But the analytics will drive you crazy if you watch it all the time. Oh, my, yes. Xenia's, one of her functions here as a team is to keep me away from the analytics sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Which can be a handful. Because I can literally check it. There's, when I was going there, I'm, I'm kind of like that. When I go into something, it's two feet and everybody else with me as well. And I was watching them probably six to eight times a day minimum. I'd be checking almost like, you know, every couple of hours and I know things aren't going to change much, but then I would go and then look at the video watch and yeah, right. it does. It becomes very uh, engulfing and you forget the whole purpose. You can't see the trees from the forest after a while. Absolutely. You know, and two alpacas asked uh, the most important analytic. Um, my opinion is that watch time yep. and watching right. whether it increases or decreases and weighing that against the time of your most recent videos yeah um if you watch the graph on that analytic of course you'll see it spike on the day that you release your video because people begin to ex anticipate that your subscribers get notification so you're always going to see a spike then yeah if you watch that average though and you see it declining and your videos are the same length and for some reason people aren't watching as much of the video and that that to me is the most important that's what i look at and that's when i start really thinking do i need to change something you know i get all excited when i get up to a 13 minute watch time consistently <laughs> so yeah no no retention time is so important and when they lose a lot of people lose fact of uh it it's it's what really makes your channel stand out in YouTube. It really yes. is the meat that's, you can have all the numbers, you can have all the things, but the retention time is what says, yep, this one's got to go higher. It's like the final stamp almost. like And consistency too. And yeah. it applies to every social media, not just YouTube. Because when it is consistent, then let's say YouTube can predict that you might be posting something on this day at this time. And then it's more likely to show it off uh, to other people, meaning being among suggested videos. Yep. So. If you figure that's a great way to get yourself as a side challenge, if you want to make a few more videos and you're not feeling the motivation, set a schedule. Say every Wednesday at 8 o'clock at p.m. or 9 a.m. Thursday, whatever you pick, I'm going to have a video scheduled to go out at that time. And it gets you thinking because you know that deadline is coming. You don't want to overdo yourself. If you feel you're having trouble, don't put yourself four videos a week. You can't do it. But if yeah. you figure one a week and you're comfortable with that or two, whatever you choose, pick your times and release them all at the same time. And YouTube really appreciates that consistency like that. Yeah, I'd pick on overachievers, but Beer Belly Travelers isn't here. <laughs> there are those who do manage to do five or six or seven videos a week i yeah. cannot imagine how even even if they're short seven to ten minute videos um it's a lot of work and uh -huh. you know you guys know you, you produce something the time it takes not just to shoot it yep. but to edit it yeah um it, it's it's a huge endeavor to produce a longer video especially even and, a live stream oh sorry go ahead no, go ahead. I I agree with you. <laughs> Even the live stream, like, you know, we do two, sometimes three. We've done it as long as four hours, but that we haven't planned on those. 
But I mean, people don't realize like, you know, if we shut down at 11 o'clock, we're up till one o'clock in the morning, adding the tags and the notations, adding the closed captions from the previous day. Mm -hmm. And we got to get the video ready for the promo one for tomorrow. Because then he's got to get ready all the tweets and send us stuff. It's it's literally an eight hour job minimum just for this live stream every day. <laughs> well, it, it's a lot of back, you know, back work. And I, yeah. I, I guess I also never really thought about it. the same as when we yeah. uh, got into photography and video business. I never realized how much not photography and video doing it is uh, probably no. more than actual doing what we love. And the same here, you know. But, but you, you know, it's all worth it at the end, so. we started the live stream 20. Well, this is our 20th day today. We skipped two Sundays and did one mm -hmm. right now in 28 days. We've gained almost over 60,000 watch minutes. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. But it is a grind. It's a hard like it's not just getting on. And like I say, I don't want I'll, the day I sit here on the couch and say, all right, you know, oh, Xenia's gone uh, out and I want a hamburger. I'm closing it down. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm closing her down and I'm closing the channel down. <laughs> I think that there, are all, there, is, there is a place for everything. The yeah. same as, uh, you know, oh, with the TV, there's always channels for each taste and there are people watching them. And, and there are millions, billions of videos on YouTube and there's yeah. always a viewer for everything. It just, we are not that, no. you know, but there's going to be somebody else doing it and somebody what else What I mean is, we, I, no I'll problem. do this and I'm happy about the minutes, but there's got to be some integrity of doing this as well. The minutes wouldn't mean anything if this was just sitting like that. It's got to right. still have some value. And yes, right now I'm not producing as much cinema <laughs> content as I usually do, but that will come. Now we're starting to get a feel for this. We're able to schedule things better. Mm -hmm. We're going to be able to do things faster, which will allow me to start editing again. So it's going to complement what we do. So I'm happy if it works out that way. And mm -hmm. Marcel, yes, it's a photo from Ljubljana, Slovenia. Uh, this is Slovenia, Slovenia yeah. Everybody, everybody see, I told you, everybody else. There's always one it. person today, too. Uh, it's a, a Ljubljana in Slovenia. It was taken uh, when Andrew was on the Euro trip, uh, on one of his trips, backpacking trips. Sorry about that. It's always Sorry. people asking about that picture. Yeah, and and hey, Joe, I'm still keeping a straight face. You keep, keep it up, buddy, but I'm still keeping a straight face. You didn't give me yet. A Joe is like that kid in the back that's not a, in school that's not a bad kid, but he's always got a giggle going on there. I think he mixed up the, the, the chats or something. Something about microwaves in three minutes. <laughs> balance. Joey, balance is needed, I think, there. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you guys for, for yeah. being here. This is so amazing and unbelievable. I kind of, we were, I think, discouraged after yeah. our technical difficulties. And, you know, like, oh, you had such a great guest and such a great stream. And everybody yeah. was so, you know, in it. And, and we were really hoping for people to get actively back in it. Yeah, but, no. This, uh, was, this was one of the most heartwarming things since we started live stream. We found it shocking. We always say, why does people come in and listen to what we got to say? We literally say that a lot to each other. <laughs> yeah, But, but it's, tonight it's to come back thing. after what happened, and and you especially, to be so gracious yes. to come back on with us. That's, it really means fun. a lot. It really does. I mean that from the bottom of my heart, it means a lot. Hey, we're having fun. I mean, you know, it's it's like somebody said earlier, it's it's like meeting people in the, in the bar. Yeah. You're hanging out in the bar, the power goes out, or the fire alarm goes out. Yeah. You're outside and hang out. Then you go oh, back. That's so it. amazing. I never even thought of that. That's great. Oh, man, you got to write a book. you got to write a book, <laughs> and you're going to be – I'll be the first to buy it, I promise you. Uh, I need to work on that. You're not the first one to tell me. Well, yeah, I, there, you go. there you go. See? You're getting <laughs> – you promise to come back and see us again sometime like this? Oh, absolutely. This has been so much fun. And uh, you guys have absolutely an awesome uh, audience on your live streams. I'm, I'm really glad to be part of it. That is so, yeah. Well, they are. That I got to give them credit for. They are. They really do make this a lot funner to do. So without them, it wouldn't be the show it is. So the Pusa Bar. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I love it. I love it. It's oh. So Joey's so crazy. It's so amazing. Oh. First time we talked voice to voice, he called me at like one o'clock in the morning, and we talked for like an hour and a half. So. <laughs> 
he's a fellow Canadian. Yeah, yeah. Just, well, he's Canadian the to the core. Away, as I said. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I got that impression. His uh, his first comment on my uh, uh, channel was something about uh, explaining the name and being Canadian. Eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's like the, all the. You know when they, we were saying that the other night. You know in America you have the uh, Kellogg's Corn Flakes with the uh, Norman Rockwell painting type of thing. Was as American as it could get. Yes. A hey, Joe is that version of Canada. <laughs> He's always got a steaming cup of coffee going to pick up some kid, not even in his own, at some arena at three minus thirty every morning just to look like a Tim Hortons commercial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much, my friend, for coming tonight. It's an oh, honor to have you here. And, and thank we'll you so much for coming. Yeah. I look forward to it. Thank you. You have a great night now. You too. Thank you. Bye. Keep in touch. Bye. Unbelievable. What a great night. That was such yeah. a bad thing in the middle. And uh, this is this is why I like doing this. Yeah. This we, solidified it tonight. We enjoyed it so much. And I can yeah. see uh, from your guys' comments that you really love this stream as well. And that's that's so amazing. Uh, yeah, I loved it. That's why we, we probably could have talked all night. Yeah. <laughs> We gotta get him back on. Oh, definitely. Soon. It's uh, it was such a smart and funny and just yeah. a, a, amazing character. I, I keep forgetting that everything is going on. I had to like shake my head and look at the chat. Like I just love his like he's got to do audio books. Yes, he's got to do it. He's got to write book. a book and, and then, then do, do audio version yeah. of it. And no. I think that's gonna be flying off <laughs> the roof. And I agree to Joey who was saying before that once noticed, uh, your channel is gonna <laughs> blow up. I'm sure. I love it. <laughs> Glad I popped in, even if A. Joe was here. <laughs> and I hope you can make it back more. There's a channel, like I say, we were connected with, and it just sometimes with all this running, it just you, you kind of lose touch a bit. And a lot of time, YouTube, I'm going to check right now, but you five bucks. Look at that. I want to show you. And you know, I've been to your channel before because I've commented on it. Oh my god. There. <laughs> See, look at one second. Oh, that's that's so amazing. See, look at 1.2. Red buff. So there you go, sir. I am reconnected back to you. So I hope we can keep in touch. That makes me so oh I hate that. Uh, I know. It's, it's awful. And there's, there's I get it's my channel. I should be able to pick who I want to watch and who I don't want to. It's one thing YouTube doesn't have the right to pick for me. But I'm not going to rant about it. I ranted enough. He yes. had to listen to me no, when the let's, power. Let's, when the, let's end on that. On yeah. the, no, because we really had such a great uh, stream tonight. And uh, it really feels it feels great. It feels right. And that's, yeah. that's what I, I love it. You know. And, and I did love get all close and personal with Push. And we did get out some of those words and all that. Uh, love it. <laughs> you guys are absolutely amazing. You guys amazing. have been amazing through all of this and both of our streams tonight. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like hard to see you go for the night. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are an integral part of our life now. Uh, yeah, but uh, don't forget to come back tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to be, well, we're going to yeah. be in two places tomorrow. Well, just because he's taking off, I just, uh, uh, he's, uh, Cor I, I'm always worried I'm going to mispronounce your name. Caloria. Coriolis, Coriolis effect, because yeah, I know what the word is, but it was together. Uh, have a great night, Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern. Yes, sir. We'll definitely keep an eye out for it, and uh, we'll be in touch, because I'm going to go watch one of your videos after as well. Um, sorry to cut you off, but I just want to get so, you uh, Do you want to talk about both streams? Yeah. Tomorrow? You go ahead, yeah. Yeah, so you're going to be able to see us in two places tomorrow. One is uh, I'm Creator Fawn. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to help channels grow their support. Uh, we're going to be there together with a new addition uh, of our family. Is the best friend in your thread is yeah. going to be on with us. Yep. 5 p.m. Eastern. Not on our channel. Uh, so you got to go and look around. Now, we, up to leaving, huh? yeah, we ourselves is going to be there uh, tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern with a special guest uh, and all tech talk. Yeah, lots of text. So bring your questions. Once again, anything to do with photo editing, video editing, 
uh, hardware, gear, anything. It's all up for discussion. So that's 8 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, and Saturday, uh, travel. Yeah. Travel, travel, travel. So tune in every day, 8 to 10 p.m., and sometimes longer because now it's almost 1 a.m. at night. So tune in, yeah. connect on Twitter, follow us at Pusha Studios, DM, tweet at us. Uh, let's get in touch there, too. Thank yeah. you so much for coming. Have a great night, Peace. guys. Keep creating. Love you.